Here's a statics problem that doesn't have too many forces, but it, the interesting part that complicates this is knowing the geometry to figure out what you're looking for. So here we've got the scenario. is a 5 kilogram, 20 centimeter sphere hangs from a 30 centimeter cable attached to a frictionless vertical wall. We want to find what is the tension in the cable and what is the normal force on the sphere from the wall. So I've set up our coordinates plus y is in the vertical direction plus x is in the horizontal direction, pointing normal away from the wall. So a free body diagram, the forces we've got are the weight of the ball pulling downward, the normal force from the wall pushing directly outward, horizontally, that's plus x direction, and the tension in the cord, which is pulling up and to the left. The numbers that we're given are the length of the cord is 0.3 meters, the radius of the ball is 0.1 meters, the mass of the ball is 5 kilograms, and we want to find the magnitudes of the tension force and the normal force. It's a Newton's first law problem that the sum of all forces is zero. If the sum of all forces is zero, mechanical equilibrium, we can say that's true for the x component of force and the y component of force are both zero. Geometrically, what we're going to use to find some relations between these quantities is similar triangles. We know the direction of the tension is in the same direction as the cable. So here are our similar triangles. We've got this triangle, which is dimensions. So the length of the cable, what this, what this length is, this is from the wall to the center of the ball. So the cable is length L, and then from the edge of the ball to the center is R, so this whole length is L plus R. And then the distance from the center of the ball to the wall is also radius R. So we know those two numbers. A similar triangle with the same angles, not the same dimensions, but the same angles, are the forces, which also add up to zero, so we have the normal force in the horizontal direction, the weight in the vertical direction, and the tension obliquely going between the weight and the normal force. So now we can break down these forces into some components, x and y components. The weight has no x component, it's all negative w in the y direction. The tension has both x and y components. In the x direction, it's backwards, negative. In the y direction, it's upwards, positive. Normal force has only an x component, no y component. And from Newton's first law, we know that the sum of forces in the x direction is zero, and the sum of forces in the y direction is zero. From our similar triangles, we know that this ratio, n over t, is going to be the same as this ratio, r over l plus r. So from that we can solve for n, and get n is t times r over l plus r. We also know from this triangle being a right triangle that the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sums of the squares of the other two sides. So t squared equals w squared plus n squared, and then what I've done here is I've plugged in our value for n, t times r over l plus r, so t squared equals w squared plus t squared r squared over the square of l plus r. Why do we do this? Well now we have an expression for t that's in terms of r, l plus r, and w, all of which are known. Once we can then solve that for t, we can plug that back into our equation for n and find both of those. So here's what we have. We had our expression for t, now I'm going to solve for t, basically I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator. Here's the square of l plus r, I've expanded it so that we can multiply through by the terms. I haven't expanded it on this side. We'll see why that's convenient. Basically what I'm going to try to do is put all the terms for t on one side and all the terms that don't include t on the other side. So I take this term t squared r squared over here, that's the minus t squared r squared, and here I've multiplied through t squared l squared plus 2t squared lr plus t squared r squared. And on this side we're just left with w squared times the square of l plus r. Over here, the t squared r squared minus t squared r squared cancels, so we're left with this t squared l squared plus 2t squared lr. Nothing changes on the right. Factor out the, the factor of t squared, so t squared times l squared plus 2lr equals w squared times the square of l plus r again. Now to solve for t squared, we'll just take divide both sides by the coefficient of t squared, which is l squared plus 2lr. That's what I've done here. Now to find t, just take the square root of this, 
So the square root of the w squared is just w. The square root of the l plus r squared is just l plus r. That's why I didn't bother to expand it out here. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of l squared plus 2lr. Now this potentially had two solutions, a positive and a negative. But since we're just looking for a vector magnitude, that's always going to be positive and we can ignore the negative root that we get out of this. Now we're going to check this for um, units. Do the units work? Here we have t, which is tension, which is force, equals weight, which is a force, times, what's this, l plus r? That's a distance. L squared plus 2LR, that's distance squared, so distance over the square root of the distance squared is just distance over distance, that's dimensionless, and we have weight equals weight, the units work. Now we take this and plug it into our expression for N to find what the normal force is, and that's what I've done down here. N, before we said, was T times R over L plus R, and then here, um, just plugging in our value for T, that's L plus R over the square root of L squared plus 2LR, still our R over L plus R. Our L plus R's in the numerator and the denominator cancel out. And what we're left with is N equals the weight times R over the square root of L squared plus 2LR. Our units work out for this because N should be a force. So we, here we have on this side weight, which is a force. And now we have R, which is a distance, L squared plus 2LR. Well, these are distance squared, so distance over distance, that's going to be dimensionless, and we have the units for weight. That's fine. What about some special cases for our situation? So here you have our expressions for the tension T and the normal force N. What if the radius is infinitely small? So essentially we've just got a point mass hanging. What then are our tensions and uh, normal force? So if R equals zero, then the tension just becomes W times L, so we just, the tension just becomes weight times L over, what's this, L squared plus 2LR. Well, this term goes to zero, so we just have L over the square root of L squared, so this just becomes W. So the tension just becomes W, which is the weight of the object, and there's no normal force, and that's just the case of hanging it straight down. There's no need to push it away from the wall because there's no extent away from the wall. The, the angle is just straight down. Now, what if you're holding it on an infinitely short cord. Then what do we get? Well, so that means that L equals zero. So if we make this L equals zero, we have R over zero. Uh, that means an infinite tension, and the normal force then has to also be infinite because that's opposing the force of tension. So the force of tension is going to be pulling straight into the wall, and the normal force is pushing straight out of the wall. This is not a realistic situation. This essentially is just riveting the ball to the wall and as you can see, there's going to be tremendous tension between the ball and the wall because there's essentially no force, at least no force that we've allowed for, that's actually pulling up to support the ball's weight. It's attempting to make this infinite so we have any component of force in the vertical direction, which we don't have. Let's plug the actual numbers into our formulas. Here, the weight, um, well, the mass was 5 kilograms, multiply that by 9.8 newtons per kilogram because it was 49 newtons. The length was 0.3 meters, the radius is 0.1 meters, so 0.4. Uh, plug all those numbers through, and we end up getting 50.6 newtons for the tension, a little bit more than the weight, which is not a surprise. Plugging the same numbers into the formula for the normal force, we get 12.65 newtons that the wall is pushing out on the ball.